Welcome to my talk, Beyond the Browser from Web to Desktop. I'm Pratis, and I'm currently working as a senior software engineer at LeapFrog. I've mostly worked in front end, some back end, and currently I'm working more on the DevOps side. But among all these, uh, I've mostly loved front end because you just uh, have fun when you see something, see a good design come to life, right? So, Electron. How many of you actually used Electron? and made an app with it? Very few. Nice. <laughs> so Electron is a framework, right, to create desktop application using web technologies. It's basically Node.js and Chromium. Uh, it's a blend of Node.js and Chromium. So technically, you can run any uh, web applications in desktop. So uh, some of my favorite applications are made in Electron, like Slack, VS Code, and Discord. So, uh, we use this in our daily lives every time. So in today's talk, I won't be actually talking about how you can use Electron. Um, you are all talented developers. You can Google that yourselves, right? However, I will be talking about our experience, uh, our challenges, and our learnings in making this uh, application. So first of all, what we've been using, Electron, obviously. So uh, we are good at using web technologies, and we are going to leverage that in the desktop as well. So next is React. So we've been using React for a very long time now, and at this point, we are very confident to say that we love React. Right? If you ask us what you use, we are just going to say React, basically. And TypeScript. So our applications need to scale as well, right? So we have type safety with TypeScript. And for our local offline database, we are using SQLite. So this has been our front end stack for creating a desktop application. Now let's start with something simple, like URLs and routing in the desktop environment. So first of all, in the development phase, uh, you start out as normally uh, when you uh, use a React app or something. You uh, start your web server, start uh, serving in the local host, right? You start your clean URLs, routes, but it, uh, it works same as uh, making a web app, right? But until, until you go to production and you find out that it actually uses a file path and not a web service, and your application crashes because the URLs don't work anymore, right? It just doesn't work, it just crashes because the file path does not support those clean URLs. But there is a simple solution for this. Uh, just use hash-based router, right? Just use hash based router. If you are using React, you can, you can use hash router, right? Also, if you look at this, this is a pretty ugly URL, and your uh, clients actually don't want to see this URL, right? But in a desktop app, you're not actually going to see a URL, so who's going to know, right? Another thing, copy and paste does not work on Mac, right? <laughs> we actually found this out at the later stages of our project, that copy and paste does not work on, devel uh, on production side, but it works in development. So that was really a pain in the, you know. Uh, <laughs> so there's a simple solution again for this. There's a sim uh, in Mac, basically you need an edit menu, and you have to add the caught, copy, and paste commands in that menu. And there's a simple API to do this as well. So keep in mind while doing an Electron app that you have to take this into account. So next is, Let's talk about native modules. So native modules are basically modules that are written in C++, right? Uh, for example, SQLite and Bcrypt. Now, native you can actually install these native modules as a normal NPM package, like NPM install SQLite, right? And it will normally install like any of your node modules. But there's one difference that if you look into the source code of uh, SQLite, you can see that it's actually written in C++, right? And with some node bindings. Now the problem with this is that uh, it needs to be compiled for the target platform. What I mean by this is, if you're building an app for uh, Windows, you have to build for Windows. If you're making an app for Mac, you have to build for Mac, right? And similarly for Linux. So Mac OS can actually build for all three platforms, except when you use a native dependency. And so uh, it actually uh, brings in major overhead uh, when you are developing for all three platforms, right? So we uh, 
basically encourage you to use a CI CD pipeline. So we use, for Windows, we use VSTS. You can also use AppWare. And for Linux and Mac OS, you can use Travis CI and Circle CI to automate your builds so that your updates, are, uh, go, updates go to the user as soon as you want to. All right, so next topic, let's talk about performance. Now, performance is one of the most talked about thing while using an electron. And if, if your application is slow, your end users don't actually care uh, if it's built on Electron, right? Uh, for the end users, it just have to work fast, right? So uh, there are some things that affect the performance of an application. So first is the startup time. Now, for a desktop app to be a desktop app, it needs to open up in an instant, right? Double click and open, double click and open, right? So for that, uh, there are various things that you have to take into account. One thing is downloading your JavaScript bundles. So in a web application, when you download your JavaScript bundles, it will take some time, right? Because it's through a network and it is available in the server. So maybe 500 sec milliseconds, two to three seconds, it doesn't matter. But in a desktop environment, all your bundle files are actually present locally, so it actually does not take some time. So 2ms, 1ms, doesn't care. So th this does not mean that your bundle file has to be huge. So you cannot put in a 5MB, 6MB bundle file just because it uh, transport it instantly, right? So uh, you have to take into account that the browser still has to parse your bundles, right? So let's see an example. Um, um, <laughs> sorry. So let's see an example. We have uh, one line of code here. Just, it just prints high, right? If you look in the evaluation period, it just takes two milliseconds to evaluate this script. That's pretty fast. That was the earlier script, actually. Double click open voila. So let's just add one line of extra code. Right? You require a library called next. Now, if you see the evaluation trip, it actually takes 155 milliseconds, just because of one library that you imported. Right? So suppose you import five, eight libraries. Right? So if you import eight libraries, and you see the evaluation period, now it's 700 milliseconds. So you can quickly see how this goes beyond. right? In an application, uh, your bundles are two megabytes, three megabytes, and it, uh, so let's see this example. This is one of our production apps. It actually takes three seconds to evaluate this script. So when you double click the icon, it takes three seconds to open this app. That's really bad, right? So yeah, that's really bad. So you have to take into account these things. So there are many things that you can use to solve this problem. One thing is, Import only when you need it. So just use dynamic imports only, uh, when you are using something like, a, like Lodass or something, who use modules, just use it in the function. And that require actually caches it in the next function run. Another is code splitting. You have things like Webpack, right? We can actually split the code into multiple files, and these files will be imported only when it is needed and not in the start of time. So that will gradually increase your performance of the application. So next is resource utilization. So in resource utilization, we know that Chrome uses a lot of memory, right? We have seen a lot of meme, like this one. I don't know where I found it, but I found it, right? So it uses a lot of uh, memory. But maybe it's not just Chrome's fault. Right? We are using so much of JavaScript nowadays that maybe it's not just Chrome's fault. Right? I mean, half of that uh, jar contains our node modules folder. So I think it's our fault too, not just Chrome's. So, let's look, uh, so there are, Chrome provides a different number of tools that you can use to see this. Right? So one is the performance monitor. So in performance monitor, you can actually see your CPU uses, your heap size, your DOM nodes, right? So how many of you use this? I count five. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so uh, you can see that any interaction you make on the site, it uses up some CPU. It uses up some heap size, and uh, your DOM nodes can be listed. So this is actually the only dynamic thing I found in our website. Uh, so we have vacancies if you want to apply. 
free marketing. Right? So, so you have to take into account about the CPU uses as well. So another tool is repaints and the FPS meter. So repainting a website, right, it's uh, a really expensive task. You have to take into account what you are repainting. So if an arbitrary thing is repainting, you have to stop it. And you can look into it by this tool. So let's uh, look at an example. Suppose you have a contact list, right? And you have to render 1,000 users in that contact list. What do you do? You just render it, right, obviously. So when you render that, it actually lags. So when you show and hide that list, the browser freezes because it's trying to render thousands of users, right? So even when you scroll, let's just get to that part. Even when you scroll, if you look at the CPU uses, it's actually 80 to 90%. Even just scrolling that list, right? And it's just a list. It's not even an entire website. So this is actually when your uh, CPU starts heating up and your fans start cracking up, right? And also your battery uses diminishes. So you have to fix this, and there are many ways you can fix this. And one way is our next topic: virtualized list. How many of you use virtualized list? OK, only five again. <laughs> I think you are learning a lot, right? I don't know. <laughs> so virtualized list. What? So before we begin a virtualized list, let's look at a normal list. So in a normal list, you have a window, right? And if you have to render thousands of users or thousands of elements, then you just render it and you scroll. You scroll with that thousands of elements. So that is why it uses those CPU. In a virtualized list, you don't render thousands of lists, but you only render uh, what you have to see. Suppose the viewport can only support four of the elements. So you just scroll, render another one, remove the top part. So scroll, remove, top, eh, enter. <laughs> scroll, remove, add, right? So uh, let's just look at this animation till I casually drink some water. So this is virtualized list. So let's look at this virtualized list in our previous example. So right off the bat, you can see that your contacts now render in an instant, right? There is no lag. And even if you see the CPU uses, you can see that it's not using that much, right? It was going 80% last time. Your DOM nodes are less now. Less DOM nodes means your memory is less too. So you can utilize this in actually many different scenarios. For example, Slack uses this in their messages. Okay, so that's actually a random channel. Don't pay attention to that. There's stupid stuff there. <laughs> so let's look at the left side, your right side. You can actually see there's only five or six divs rendering at a moment, but you have maybe hundreds of messages, right? And as you scroll, <laughs> and as you scroll, you can see that there's only five divs and not more than that. So there's also the class. <laughs> the class name is also virtual list, so I'm assuming they're using virtual list, right? So yeah, if you have Slack, log into that, uh, open out your console, and see for yourselves. And this is our final topic for today. <laughs> Don't run stuff in the main process. If you use Electron, Electron has two processes. One is the main process, and another is the renderer. Right? And they can communicate with each other with IPC, known as interprocess communication. Now, right off the bat, as when developers first go into this, you can see that renderer is just a browser window, and main is the Node.js part. So when you think about it, it's just front end and back end. Right? People think that way, but it's actually not. Uh, when you think of a backend, people want to use their CPU expensive task in that part, but you actually should not. Because uh, where the main process actually handles all of the browser windows. You can actually open many of the browser windows, right? And that's the main's job to handle all this. So if you run an expensive task in main, every of the browser windows gets affected, not just one. 
So where do you run your CPU expensive task? One idea is, suppose you have main, suppose you have renderer. If you have to run a CPU expensive task, just say the main, hey, do this expensive task for me. Right? Now the main does not have to run that task in its process, but what it can do is open up another browser, another browser, sorry, and hide it. There's just one flag, show false. Hide that browser, right? And you have now a background process running. Now you can't do this in web applications because you are just limited to one tab. But in a desktop application, this is like opening multiple tabs, but one tab's process can be run on another tab, and you can actually use that result. So it's running in the background, the now main sees, you do it for me. Okay? And the background browser window does it and sends the result to the main. And now your UI gets rendered. So as the UI is rendering, its expensive tasks are in the background, not in the foreground. So you can actually use multiple windows for this, but don't use too much because it's just like opening many tabs and it will obviously consume more RAM. So yeah, in summary, use hash router because Electron uses file-based path. Copy and paste support does not work on Mac. If you use a native dependency, you have to build on your target platform, right? If you're building for Windows, you have to build on Windows. Take account of startup times. That's the most crucial thing in a desktop app. It has to open when you double click it in an instant. Use DevTools, monitor resource utilization, and various other tools that are provided by Chrome. Use virtualized list. This is actually an important thing. You can utilize this everywhere in your web application. And finally, don't run stuff in the main process. And that has been my learning. That is all. Thank you.